Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, I wanna show you how to replace a t-shirt logo in DaVinci Resolve 18, just using the color page with the new Surface Tracker tool. Let's take a little bit of a look. All right, so we're in Resolve 18 at the moment. It's currently in public beta, so there might be a few bugs here and there, but if you are using this either now or in the future, this method should be the same. So I wanna take you through it. At the moment, I've just got a bit of a test clip here of me having a bit of a pretend interview. Not really much going on. However, I do want to point out a few things about this particular technique that are going to be really important to know. And it is quite specific in some ways. It's really going to, I think, work best for static shots like what we've got at the moment. And it's going to work best for people, unlike myself, who talk a lot with their hands. If you have, for example, the talent who goes like this and basically covers the logo with their hand at some point, it's gonna get a little bit complicated. This method isn't gonna work as well. So you might be better off moving to a workflow in Fusion or After Effects uh, compositing software in order to do that a little bit better. But if you are lucky enough to have a good little interview clip like this, where you can do it really easily, uh, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is gonna open up the effects panel here and I'm just gonna search for Surface Tracker and I'm gonna drag it into our node area here just and create a new separate node. We don't need to add it onto anything. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift and drag it over this line here, which is gonna connect it up so it does become a part of our node tree and structure. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and click shift F on the Mac in order to get a little bit closer to this T-shirt. And with my surface tracker selected, I can now start adding some points around this particular logo. Beautiful. And once I've joined it, what I can do is I can go ahead and click on the mesh section. This kind of acts as a little bit of a step one, step two, step three. And as you can see, it's generated a little bit of a mesh for us here. This is gonna be enough surface area for us to add our logo as well, our new logo. So I'm pretty happy with this. And obviously if there are any sort of issues or I wanna add some more points, I can do that in this particular part of the process as well. In this case, I'm fairly happy with it. I'm then gonna to go to track and I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, well, I'm currently not at the start and this is something that's gonna happen a fair bit too. So if it does, it's no issue. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click track forwards and then I'm gonna track backwards as well. So now that I've done that track forwards, I'm gonna track backwards too, let, let it do its thing. Beautiful. So what I can do now is I can just go ahead and play the clip through, just make sure that mesh is actually sticking onto that particular area. It looks like it's doing a fairly good job, so I'm fairly happy with it. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on the result section. Now. At this point, I can hit Shift F again to go back to my previous view and just fit this back into the viewer. And now at this point, I wanna go ahead and import my logo. In the color page, I can just go to the top left here and click on Media Pool, Dear Logo, and I'm just gonna drag it into here again as a separate node, and it'll import as an external mat to begin with. But obviously, we've got some color information there too. So if I wanna get the color information, I'm just gonna hit Alt S on the keyboard or Option S on the Mac. And as you can see, it's gone ahead and given us the color information, but obviously we don't have that matte information uh, here. So what I can do is I can actually again connect it up, just linking the top one to the bottom one here, this blue and blue, which basically gives us our alpha channel coming across. And then what I can do is I can pipe this into the surface tracker as well. So again, I'm just gonna drag these two parts of the image just across both the normal standard sort of color output and our alpha output as well. I'm gonna go back to the surface tracker and I'm gonna click on overlay placement, go to reference. And as you can see, well actually you can't see anything at the moment, but the deer logo is there. And if I sort of drag this across, you can kind of see that it's there, but it's just too big at the moment. We wanna bring it down and make it fill this, only this particular part of the frame. So as I sort of bring this down, you can see the plane starts to do some really crazy 3D stuff. That's normal. Obviously it's gonna allow us to give us uh, our perspective and make sure that it tracks properly onto the surface make sure that it just fits within our bounds too, because if it's going outside of those bounds, it's gonna mean that we're gonna have some cutoff of this particular logo. All right, so now I've basically got it in the pocket for the moment. I think this is looking fairly okay. Uh, again, we're really lucky that this T-shirt is fairly flat. There's not a lot of perspective to it. If there was, we might need to refine it, give it a little bit more finessing, but right now I'm fairly happy with that. And if we just go ahead and play it through, you can see it sticks on fairly well, although probably just the bottom of the D here is getting cut off. So what I wanna do is I wanna go back to my reference again, just sort of drag it and make sure that we aren't cutting it off. So it's looking fairly good, but obviously we've still got that logo there. So that's the next part of this process is we're gonna go ahead and replace the logo, the original logo on the T-shirt. And so what I'm gonna do is again, Shift F is gonna get me back out to the, the main section and show me every all the different controls. I'm then gonna basically select all three of these nodes and I'm gonna hit Command D on the Mac. 
And again, that's gonna go ahead and turn off these particular uh, nodes just for the moment. So now that we've turned off our specific nodes, we're gonna go ahead and add our patch replacer. Before we do that, we're actually gonna do one more thing. We're actually gonna track this first. So I'm gonna hit again with our first connector node selected, I'm gonna hit Option S on the Mac or uh, Alt S on a Windows computer. And I'm gonna go ahead and basically go over to our tracker panel here and resolve. I'm going to make sure by default there will be a window tracker, so a power window tracker. We've got no power windows on this at the moment. So I'm gonna go over to the effects part of this tracker and I'm gonna go ahead and add a point. Now I've done this multiple times now and I can tell you that as much as we always want as much tracking data as possible, sometimes when you've got a more difficult track like what this is at the moment, and I'll show you why it's a little bit more of a difficult track, uh, we wanna actually have less points because the more points that we have, the more confused everything is gonna get and I've had the patch replace tool just jumping around the entire screen. A single point has actually worked really well. So as much as some motion graphics people, VFX people are going, single point motion tracking, how, how does that even work? Uh, it can work. <laughs> it can work in this particular instance because we're pretty lucky. We don't have a lot of detail uh, that we will, basically this particular part of the image doesn't have a lot of specific intricate detail that we need to replace. So when we're tracking, we always wanna find a point of high contrast with edges. And so something like the middle here, kind of where we have an intersecting line um, with the black and the white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, again, Shift F is gonna get us back out. And I'm just gonna track this forward and see how this goes. Now it's not great. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, and it has really struggled with this particular clip. Again, I tried it using multiple tracking points and the result was actually worse than what I've got right now. So it does drift a little bit, which is not great. And you might wanna dial again, depending on your clip, you might have a bit more luck than I did. You might wanna start dialing it in a little bit more or choosing again points on this t-shirt, which are gonna be a little bit better to track. But again, make sure that we are sort of tracking something that is around that same area. Uh, so potentially the logo itself, because if for example, you do a track on the arm of the t-shirt or you do a track on the face, that's obviously gonna move independently of the logo. So it's gonna give you a totally different tracking information, tracking data compared to actually tracking the logo itself. So again, this track isn't looking great, but I'm gonna leave it for the moment. We're gonna see how we go, all right? I'm gonna go to effects and I'm just gonna search patch replacer and I'm gonna add it onto that same node. Now with the patch replacer tool, we get two parts, uh, two ellipses by default. We can change this to squares or rectangles if we'd like, but the one on the right is gonna be what we're replacing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one down. And the one on the left is what we're replacing it with. So what I generally wanna do is I wanna just make sure that what we've got right now is just covering over exactly what we need and nothing more. And this one here is again an area that's gonna be nice and easy to match. Again, potentially with this t-shirt, the least amount of creases as possible is gonna really help us out. But let's say for example, we're over here because we had to be, uh, we can use the replacement detail just to drag this one down a little bit and it almost creates a bit of a blur just to help blend it a little bit better. In this case, I'm gonna drag it up to the top here and I might just do a slight replacement detail reduction. And if I hide this as well, I can kind of just blur the edges too. Not too much, because again, we're gonna to start to see the logo, but it's gonna help blend it in a little bit more. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch it back. Moment of truth, right? Single frame looks fine. Is it gonna work okay for the overall shot? Let's have a look. It's not bad. And as I said previously, uh, I did this with multiple tracking points and it was going crazy. So sometimes a single tracking point is all we need. Even if it drifts off a little bit, it's not gonna be as noticeable on this particular t-shirt because it's just black. Even as it moves just slightly more to the left or the right, it's not noticeable. Uh, so we're pretty lucky here. Again, if you have a bit more of a complicated shot you might need to do a little bit more finessing on that track. In this case, we got pretty lucky. So now that we've done that, I can select on these three nodes again. I can hit Command D to bring them back onto the image. Now that red's looking pretty harsh, to be honest. It is just like a full red in Photoshop. So I probably could have done a little bit better to finesse that color a little bit more. But in this case, I'm gonna go down to compositing. 
This one, again, you can kind of uh, dial in yourself. I think a screen potentially with a slight reduction in the amount of opacity might help us out. And so now with that all done, let's have a little bit of a look at our final track and replacement of this particular logo. Not bad. Again, pretty simple. Uh, and again, the clip has to be pretty, pretty tight in terms of uh, the specifications for this to actually work. But again, it gives you a bit of a proof of concept of being able to do something in the color page of Resolve without having to go through a dedicated compositing software. And I think that's really exciting. And especially as we move into version 18 of Resolve, I can definitely see a big shift towards being able to do a lot more in the color page than you could previously do, which again gives more people the option to bypass Fusion, which is a very powerful compositing tool, very, uh, I guess, useful in terms of VFX workflows and motion graphics in some cases. But again, a lot of people potentially don't want to have to learn how to do that, especially when you're just trying to do something as simple as replacing a t-shirt logo, as we've just proven and demonstrated in this particular example. So again, if you have any feedback or comments or you feel like you could have done this a better way, please let me know. I'm open to learning as well. I think this is a, a, you know, a cool proof of concept and I'm really happy with how it turned out in this particular use case. If you're trying it, it's not working for you, uh, please again, let me know and tell me why. Uh, and hopefully in the future, we can keep refining this down and just get it even better. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and let me know if you wanna see more of them. But otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oi, 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 oi. All right, we're gonna get there. We are gonna get there. Could take many years.